What's up everybody? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I've actually recorded this video two weeks ago, I think, or was it a week ago? But as I was editing it, I stuttered a lot and I repeated a lot of my sentences and I mean that's fine because I can just cut it but I was too lazy to do it um, so I figured I'd just do it again because I, I already know what I want to say so here is the new intro for this bullet journal video alright let's move up one of my best friends is here by the way not in frame but she's there oh there's her hand yeah. so if I'm talking to somebody it's not a, I'm not talking to a ghost I'm talking to her all right, so I've been wanting to do, I've been wanting to bullet journal for quite a while, like since last year, but I uh, haven't been able to find any bullet journals in Jakarta. I mean, I, I, they sell it online and stuff, but when it comes to stationery, I'd rather buy it. And like, I'd rather buy it in, in a store, like a brick and mortar store, you know, cause like I want to feel the material. So I never like took the chance to buy it online. But then in November, I went to Manila with my mom and we went to National Bookstore, aka the best stationery store in the world. And the first shelf that I see was freaking bullet journals. So naturally, I ran and like went to that shelf. They had an array of options and I settled on the, I chose the gray one. I wanted a black, but they didn't have a black one. Uh, so this is it. Oh, by the way, I didn't even say in the beginning, but I'm sick as you can tell. I have the hot dude voice. It's pretty sexy though, right? I need validation. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, anywho. Yeah, so I bought this one and I uh, did it. So that was November, right? And I didn't want to start towards the end of the year already. So I figured I'd just do it for 2020. I took like a week just to figure out the system that I want and what I wanted to include in the bullet journal and I wrote them down on separate pieces of dotted paper and so so that it'll be easier for me to just transfer it as opposed to like sketching it all out here and then having to erase it but if I don't like it you know what I mean anywho yeah so that's I'm gonna show you what I did it's very simple and minimalist I can't be bothered with the intricate details and the doodles if you're that person props to you but I just need it to be practical um, as long as it's I, it's like appealing to the eyes enough for me I'm good so before I show the overhead footage the materials that I used were pencil and eraser highlighters glue pen uh, this really cute like popsicle slash ice cream pen that I borrowed from my little sister because I love the uh, I just love the ink and how it glided across the paper the last material that I used was a broken ruler because I didn't have a proper ruler a full ruler if you may all right anyway let's jump on to the video go flipping through the first two pages I decided to have a mood board slash dream board of 2020 because one I simply thought it'd be a neat idea and two I didn't want nor saw the need for an index I know its purpose but I personally don't think I need it so I decided to skip an index page for the process, I basically saved various images from Pinterest. Some pictures represent the things or goals I wanted to achieve, some are stuff I found empowering, and the rest are images I kept simply because I liked it, found it funny, or I related to them. I arranged them and played with the layout prior to filming, then when I liked how it all looked, I took a photo and started gluing them in place. Next page is a year at a glance. Originally, I was going to leave this page blank and fill the next with a feature log, but I didn't like how it looked, so I opted to fill this page with a year at a glance instead. Plus, my phone is always out of space, so I constantly have to delete photos and or apps. And one of the apps that I've already sacrificed is the calendar. Anyway, so I figured having this page would do me a lot of good. As you saw a few seconds ago, I started by highlighting sections I wanted to highlight, then I wrote on top of it with a black pen. Prior to this though, I did mark the areas I was writing on with pencil first to minimize screw ups, and I did that for all the other pages as well. And voila, here is my year at a glance. Moving on, we have the feature log. I decided to design it this way as I thought it was an easier way to read the page. 
So basically what I did was I designated space for each month, then I'll later on write down dates I want or need to remember, like any special events, travel dates, etc. Next few pages are for my quarterly goals, both personal and for work. I divided each page in half and then I labeled each section accordingly. I used to be that person who would write down goals that I wanted to achieve within the year, but because I never set them into a specific timeline, I get overwhelmed and then I never accomplish a lot of the goals that I set for myself. So I think doing quarterly goals would be more realistic and more achievable, and we shall see if I achieve more this way. Alright, so we now move on to my monthly spread. I contemplated on whether to put the spread on one page or both pages and eventually opted for the two page option. Um, my reasons were that I wanted to use the spread as a hybrid between a content and personal calendar so um, I'll be adding filming days, uploads, travel, and days for personal projects. And also, instead of writing down what I have going on a particular day, I'll be using little post-its so that if plans change, I can just easily move them around. And so the bigger boxes will provide space for the post-its. On the left side of the spread, I added a section for any sponsors Gado may have, and also I've been aiming to finish at least one book per month. So I've added a section for books as well. The next page is for social media statistics. The first half are stats from YouTube and the bottom half from Instagram. Also, I realized my grammatical error literally right after I wrote it down with a pen. It's supposed to be stats of December, not for. Ugh, stupid me. But anyway, because there were a lot of boxes on this page, I ditched the ruler and freehanded almost everything. I literally could not be bothered at this point. Okay, so why exactly do I have a stats page on my bullet journal? Now the reason I do is because I receive emails from brands wanting to work with Gado around one to two times a month. And I usually would update the media kit according to which week I received the email. But I found that updating it constantly wasn't efficient at all. So instead of doing that, I'm going to start sending them stats of the previous month, which in this case is December. And I thought it'd be useful to have all the stats laid out in a single page when I update the media kit so I don't like have to go uh, check on YouTube and Instagram and all that. I can just look at this one page. Anywho, I'll be filling this page in at the beginning of each month, and I'm only including stats that brands usually look at, which are the channel or Instagram profile and the demographics. Moving on to the finance tracker. I'm kind of a finance nerd, and I enjoy tracking where my money goes, which you should consider doing, by the way. It'll keep you accountable, and you'll be more aware of your spending habits. I add my expenditures mostly on my phone and I would budget my money on random pieces of paper which I inevitably misplace or lose. So having a dedicated page just for tracking where my money goes will be super helpful. On the top of the page is the starting amount I have on each bank account and then below it are money segregations. So like a portion of the money in this one bank account is for monthly expenses while another portion is to be saved. The next is income, then outgoing, which is for the money that goes to specific places and is the same amount each month. The last is IOU, which is the section for when I either borrow money from friends or lend money to them. On the right side, I drew up a table for my expenses. The top is for necessities like rent, groceries, and transport. And the bottom portion of the table will be for wants, like purchasing that cute little container from Ikea that I totally do not need. The table on the left is specifically for Gado expenses, and the section right below it are for notes. I um, thought it'd be good to jot down things that I could improve on in terms of spending and saving. And maybe I could like write down a super short summary of the month. So like I can say um, I spent too much on food this month or I could have saved more on transport fare, you know, things like that. And then we are done. Next are brain dump pages. I write down random thoughts and ideas in this little notebook I carry with me everywhere, but it's scrambled and without structure. And so I end up just forgetting about whatever I wrote on there. Therefore, my solution is to dump jumbled thoughts on that little notebook and then I'll transfer and organize them over here on these two pages. Next pages are for word vomit purposes. This is kind of like the diary section of the, the journal. It's for thoughts or stuff I just want to write down. So like if I had an epiphany that day or something from my devotion spoke to me or if I want to remember something that happened on a particular day, I'll write down my thoughts and how I, how I felt on here. 
I designated only two pages because I don't feel like writing every single day. So I thought two pages would be enough. But as of the time I'm recording this, I've filled in one fourth of the first page already, and it's not even the second week of January yet. <sighs> So I might add more pages in the months to come, but we shall see. And finally, we have arrived at the weekly log of the journal, which is the most boring page and also the one with almost no structure. <laughs> I've seen a bunch of people who have very structured weekly logs, as in they place their tasks into different categories, but doing that overwhelms me um, and makes me feel very constricted. So I wanted to experiment first with what system would work best for me and I decided to do that by having no structure at all. Well, almost no structure at all. So while I figure out some sort of structure that I can use, my current system in writing down a weekly log is to write down the date on the top left, and then I will jot down the things I need to accomplish that day. And then I will highlight each task accordingly. So yellow is for personal stuff, like errands and Netflix shows I need to catch up on. Purple is for work, and pink is for personal projects, kind of like a hybrid between the functions of yellow and purple. I'm a very visual person and I like color coding so I thought highlighting would be the most effective for me. As, well, as of right now, this might change. But yeah, with that, here is the final flip through of my bullet journal. Yeah, that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching a time lapse of how I did my bullet journal and that you maybe perhaps uh, took inspiration from one of the pages I did. Uh, yeah, I have nothing else to say. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go chillax now because I feel dizzy. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.